right, all right. So uh, this is Salty Urza Tracker from player Ow Ow. Uh, this is a very different type of Urza deck, so we're not playing Emery at all, uh, and we're playing an abysmally low artifact count of eight. Almost makes you ask, why is it worth it? But then you realize we've also got four copies of Gilded Goose and then four copies of Tireless Tracker. Now, Tireless Tracker has the ability, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. This is a colorless clue artifact token with two mana, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. So this is basically a soul time mid-range deck with the Mystic Sanctuary Cryptic Command package that we've grown to know and love, Metallic Rebukes, and then just a very soft Urza synergy here. This is sort of the most, I don't know, beatdowny version that I've seen so far. And the numbers are all super clean if you look through this list. It's four baubles, four astrolabes, four goose, four fatal push, three inquisition, three thoughtseize, four rebuke, four tra trackers, four Urzas, and four cryptic commands. Uh, you know, young me is jealous of just how clean this deck list looks. Um, this is the kind of thing that I would make in the class during high school instead of paying attention to my English teacher. Sorry, um, but this is what I was doing, doodling in the margins of notebooks. I don't think there's much to say about this main deck other than it's sort of middling and dirtily and mid-range, and I don't know if it's going to work entirely, but I'm darn sure going to have a good time with this. Uh, we're using a lot of the different tools that we've used in the other Urza decks here. Um, for some reason, we're playing one Dammies here, one Nile Spell on one Graph Digger's Cage, but we don't have any War of Inventions to fetch them, so that's a little bit speculative. Uh, and then we've got Mystical Dispute, Ceremonious Rejection, Dead of Winter, Brutality, Tezzeret, and Ashiok. So these are all going to make themselves apparent as we hit the matchups going through this league. So, Sultai Urza Tracker, super excited about this one, hoping to see Tireless Tracker fly high here and prove that it's worth an inclusion in my teamer deck. Uh, we just hit a sweet 4-1 in a league with uh, the Urza Breach deck, but that's, uh, that's me out of my depth playing combo, so let's try to play some fair, dirty mid-range Urza. That's what I'm all about. Winning die rolls, always a good place to start. Seems like an ideal, dirtily mid-range hand. So, let's see the lay of land on this matchup. Bolt, Liliana, and Jund lands. If I had to guess, let's say we're against Jund. Means this Tireless Tracker is not going to live. So Tireless Tracker is definitely going to be a turn four play in this matchup, unless something very strange happens. Astrolabe is a great pickup here. Fourth land is also a good pickup here. So now we have the ability to cast Cryptic Command. So the downside of the situation is I have nothing I can do about that Lightning Bolt. So they played Black Cleave and Ravening, Raging Ravine. They have two cards we don't know about. I'm inclined to just leave everything up here and just start making sure that I'm getting value with my tracker next turn. Or just holding up through Cryptic Command. Cycle Baron Moor, so that was one of their draws. We didn't know about that before. and So they're still on three unknowns. Thoughtseize is fine. We have a very redundant hand here. 
probably going to take one of our trackers. See, take the little pusher. That probably means there's a Voip coming in. Yep. So that makes sense. We are playing four uh, Fatal Push in this deck, so gonna look to draw another one of those. And this fetch land is absolutely beautiful draw. So you get a clue there. I can fetch for another clue in response to anything that they want to do. I think I'm gonna fetch proactively here. So I'm gonna get an island because that puts us on active for Mystic Sanctuary. Could get Breeding Pool. I want something that's untapped because actually it was probably a mistake to fetch uh, proactively like that. Because now I don't have the option of fetching a Mystic Sanctuary. But getting two clues is definitely pretty valuable in this matchup. If we swing with the Goyf here, I'm just inclined to take the four. I know they have the Lightning Bolt in their hand, but I want to make them spend it and their mana. They definitely have more lands. They still got the Nurturing Peat Land. They played this other Black Cleave. So they've got two cards we don't know about. Yep. Get Goyf into a 5 6. Play the Peat Land. Second Liliana. That's, yeah, that's a little frustrating. Okay, so definitely discarding the island here. Kind of getting squeezed already, though, by our opponent. If I play the tracker, they can edict it. Um, they played the Peatland, they played the Bloodstained Mire, or they discarded the Bloodstained Mire, they played the Bolt. So the remaining card in their hand, we don't know what it is. Um, Cryptic Command is not the best right now. I guess I could tap their team and bounce their Liliana, depending on how the turn goes. So I think our highest chance for survival here is play the island past the turn. Doesn't feel great, but they're incentivized to empty their hand before they plus their Liliana. We might be able to get them there. But we'll see what happens with that. Just proactively activate the Liliana. Well, that, yeah, that sucks. Losing my tracker here. Yep. They discard Catacombs, sure. They play a Blood Braid Elf. Vomit. And they flip a Culligan's Command. Double Vomit. Well, whatever they want to kill. Yeah, they have no creatures to return here, so they're just going to shatter one of my artifacts. Probably the Astrolabe. So... <sighs> they're trying to make me discard a card. Which is super frustrating, because it means I can't bounce their Elf in response. Or uh, tap down their team to not get hit for eight. Can tap their team to not get hit for four. So we're going to return target permanent to its owner's hand. Tap all creatures of my opponent's control. And the permanent we're going to return to their hand. I, I guess it's Tarmogoyf? No. Because if I'm going to bounce the Tarmogoyf, I can use a different mode. I guess I can counter the Blood Braid and bounce the Goyf and take zero damage this turn. Yeah, that seems good. So, still lose my clue, which is not great, but I'm going to take zero damage this turn, so that seems already. Not a great draw. Crack a clue. Also not a great draw, but we're not dying this turn, so I guess we'll stick in it. Goyf, sure. Yep, 
possibly are. Yep. And and use that. Put cryptic back on top. Which I'm gonna have to do in response to the Liliana ultimate if they use that. Could also use it to put fatal push back on top. I guess if they Liliana ult me. Okay, they're just totally plus. So I'm gonna put fatal push back on top. Draw the push, kill their goif. Yeah. I think we die next turn no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, they've got us squeezed from a bunch of different directions here, so we're just toast. The lack of veil of summer on the sideboard feels real rough in this matchup, so. Feels like we have no tools for Jund here because we're basically playing a Jund deck. Um, I guess Tezzeret is a powerful individual card. And I could swap out a Goose for it. So let's try... No, Metallic Rebuke. So counter is not so great against Jund, generally speaking. I guess I could get Ashiok in here too, but... Nile Spellbomb seems reasonable as well. So we'll split the difference. One Rebuke and one Goose out. Seems okay otherwise. Not a great matchup, but we will see what we will see. I'd like to play first. Yes, please. Push Goose. Yeah, so I can turn one Goose here. Seems fine. I don't really want to fetch green. But I think going to head off. Good luck for the rest of the league. I'll catch you later on YouTube. Well, thank you, Pogo Shark, and you have yourself a fantastic evening. I, too, will be heading out into the frigid wasteland that is Canada later on tonight. Okay. Opponent really agonizing on their six, I guess. I guess, I guess, I guess. I guess. Super. All right, so I didn't really resolve what I want to do here. I think it's Goose first because Astrolabe is a redraw. So while this does sort of give them more options with how to mess me up here, I think... They're not incentivized to keep removal heavy hands against me. They didn't really see anything other than Tracker. But I guess Tracker's pretty good against them, so. They had no removal. Well, that is just Jim Dandy. So I'm going to play Astrolabe. Trigger. Inquisition. Tarmogoyf. Well, that's just a fantastic thing. Plague Engineer for my Thopters that I don't have. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Golgant's Command gets to be a two for one later on. I think because I've got the push in hand, I just take the KCOM and let him take it away here. We're going to get to play Tezzeret next turn if we would like. Would I like to attack my Goose? I'm going to pass. Thank you, Moto. Thank you, Moto, for um actualing me. Getting that goif. Getting those goif bucks. So with the knowledge of their hand reasonably well known, do I astrolabe and push? Oh, I think I think I, all my all my decisions just get got made for me. 
So I can play Urza off the food. Astrolabe's the only thing left. Astrolabe does not produce snow mana. And it doesn't... Did I miss making a food there? I bet you I did. Did I? No, I didn't. Good, 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 good. I think it's just Astrolabe push here because the worst thing that happens is... They can play a single discarded spell... But, or they can play Plague Engineer, but I don't really care about Plague Engineer. Do I want this Bobble in play? I guess I do. I'm not playing Sire or anything. Be interested to see if they play the Plague Engineer. They have two cards I don't know about. Croxa and Plague Engineer. Did I bring in Ashiox? I did not. Yeah. Good choice, me. They Croxa me. Liliana the Veil. That sucks a little bit. So if I could discard either of these cards. I think I discard Urza. And that's because Tezzeret kills the Liliana by animating one of my artifacts here. Putting me in good shape. Do I want to draw a card with Mishra's Bobble? Yes, I do. Top card of their library is Mountain. Super. It not being a spell is one of the best things that could happen. We'll shock that. I will... Play, uh, if I play the Astrolabe, I draw a card, but then they're going to Liliana me. I uh, guess I'd rather keep food. I can always animate the food and smack them with it. So out of all of my artifacts, which one do I want to... Hold on. Why do you not tell me which one's newly controlled? Okay. going to animate my food. It's got to be this one, right? That's the new one. So I just played an... No, I didn't play an Astrolabe. Didn't play, play an Astrolabe this turn. So I don't have a newly controlled one. So combat, attack down Liliana. Pew, pew, pew. Cracking in there. Boom. All right. And then if they crocs on me, I'm forced to discard my Astrolabe. But that's okay, because I've got a Tezzeret in play. Which is... Plussing Tezzeret in this deck is, like, super spec speculative because there's like no artifacts to hit so i think actually what i'm going to do with tezzeret is just minus it what is this plague engineer on construct oh they have a crocs in the graveyard well crap that's not good for me oh they discarded it to their liliana of course they did why wouldn't they Tracker's an okay draw, but I don't have any way to get a second land right now. So I think I'm going to make my food into a creature. We're going to play the tracker because I don't have any way to stop them from making me discard it. So they can play Plague Engineer name construct and shrink wait hold on they don't have a creature type neat all right so my my food and my astrolabe do not have creature types so they can't be affected by plague engineer which i don't think that they discarded at some point sneakily cool so they have plague engineer plus two yep engineer's fine I 
doubt they're attacking here. Cool, they are not. Cool. Draw. Well, that's insane. Alright. So I can plus my Tezzeret. There's very little chance that this draws me an artifact, but it is possible. Cool. Did not. Uh, any order is fine. Play Urza. Skidoosh. Alright. Chosen creature type with Plague Engineer is Snek. Interesting. So they're worried about Ice Fang Quattle. I think I just passed the turn here. At a bit of an impasse with my Yund opponent here in game number two. Don't K command me, bro. Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, that's pretty good. Renin 6, not, not great. Sure. They don't have a land, so they pick up nothing. Okay, and then end of turn we go tap, tap, activate, create a food by making green here. Cool, so that's another mana rock. So I can kind of start going off with Urza this turn if I want to. Uh, do I want to do that? Do I want to play a second tracker first? I think so. Problem is I don't have a lot of non-creature artifacts to activate here. So I've got one, two, three mana there. And most of my artifacts are actually pretty big and useful. Let's Tezzeret plus see if I can pick up another artifact. No, of course not. Any order is fine. Uh, haven't played a land yet this turn though, and that would be really good right now. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And I'm gonna tap the food because um, my construct can grow from this. Uh, shuffle. Oh, thought these is okay. Ashiok and Ashiok. I mean, sure. So, bit of an awkward spot, but I think we're going to be okay based on their hand. So they need a pretty good draw here to get out of this situation. Yep, return nothing. They've got Ashiok plus one. So there's a good chance they just play Ashiok and exile my graveyard. Second Bloodbraid Elf. Well, that's pretty great. Liliana the Veil. Vale. Also, well, she's not great here. Can we sack a creature? Sure. I think I'm going to sack the goose. Feels not the best, but... So just hoping we get something going this turn. That's insane. So I think we just kill them here. Because I go... U is 5-5. Five, five. Tap. All your opponent's creatures draw a card. Bang. Attack step. Crack in for a million. Goodbye, Packers fan. I will hit you for... 30 ish. So let's see 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, no, so 27. Sweet. All right, going to game four. So Cryptic might actually be the thing to cut here just a little bit, get the rebuke back in. Don't actually want Ashiok against the Jund. They're just too too good. Tezzeret was like A plus 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 there. That was nuts. Um, suppose Graph Digger's Cage could be okay to bring in. I don't really want to do that, but I think I can board out a single piece of discard since um, they're likely to go empty handed so quickly. 
Dead of Winter seems like it could be okay, but it's also going to kill most of my creatures, so I'm sure there's a sideboarding plan that makes sense with that, but I'm sure as heck not seeing it. Actually, if I have... Okay. okay. So this is turn to rebuke. I'm going to keep this. It's not... Not the best hand, but we're playing 22 lands, and we have a couple draws at it, so they mold a six. Here's hoping we can get a little bit lucky here in game three. Little bit lucky is all we need. Little bit of luck, little bit of luck. Hey, that's a little bit of luck. That is not. Shock. Goose. Bobble. Not gonna bobble on their upkeep because if I don't draw anything else, then at least I can metallic rebuke the turn after. They can kill my goose and I'll still be able to do that. Okay, black means no ran and six. Collector of Ooh. All right, I am gonna bobble them in response, and that is because I would really like to draw a land more than I did before. That's a little unfortunate. So, I can sack my food for black here to push. That's actually not particularly useful right now. So, just going to pass the turn. This is a real tough one. Really, Urza flooded. It's a thing that happens in this deck from time to time. Hopefully, my opponent's hand is somewhat middling because we could be in trouble real quick. Push, sure. So we're gonna sack for black now. Push the oof. Goose goes down. Maybe they have fetch for their other color and get Ren Six going. Or just play a goif. It's a big boy. Alright, we need something to get us going quick. Alright. That is kind of acceptable. So play Astrolabe, draw, push, no. Thoughtsies. So hand could have gone better, but it could definitely go worse. Blood Braid, get the heck out of here. Woo! All right, so Goyf's going to beat us up a little bit. I'm going to take like 10. Yeah, that's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. I'm going to take our rebuke here because it's the only thing we could do. They took one of the Urzas. That seems completely wrong to me, but okay. And if I draw a land next turn, I'm going to be able to... Rebuke their Assassin's Trophy, so... Rebuke that. Get out of here, nerd. We're going to... We're going to six here, which is not the best. Goose. So it looks like I'm dead. I'm not actually dead, just mostly dead. So we're gonna block their goif if they don't trophy my goose. Yeah. Donk. So this gives us another draw step at sure. What do you name? Construct? Are you smart this time? Maybe human snake again. Okay. So they're very much worried about getting blown out by Ice Bank Waddle. Which is fair, I guess. Uh, I really want to draw land, so do it. Yes. Alright, so I have to go to four for this, which is not the best.
get Snow Covered Island on this one, Mystic Sanctuary on the next one. So this lets me get a push on top. This means I'm going to have to not search when they trophy me, but better than losing the game, I suppose. All right. So we want to block the Plague Engineer. They trophy Urza. Yeah, okay. So what are they trophying? Trophying the Construct, so. Yeah, that makes sense. So sack the food. Go to seven. Yeah. And I will elect not to search because I know I have a fatal push on top. Urza has to block the. So Urza can block either here and he will die either way. So I'm going to block the Charmagoyf to take less damage. And it looks like we're going to have to fade a draw here because we go Urza. Urza gets Construct. Tap my Graph Digger's Cage. Turn the blue into black. And we push the Goyf right out of here. So lots of live draws in their deck, but we've successfully somewhat navigated this game. There's lots of things that can pull us way ahead here. If they attack. I'm incentivized to block here because they play Lightning Bolt. So block the Plague Engineer with the Construct, trade those. Does limit my mana a little bit. Now they could Liliana me would be their best draw, or another Plague Engineer is fine. Had to block though because they could have Lightning Bolt there. We do get two draws, so that's pretty good. They're going to name Snake? Sure. Still petrified of my Ice Fang Quaddles that I don't have. Going to play Bobble. Take Urza for a spin. Tap one, two, three, four, five. Spin two, win. Inquisition, why not? They have no cards in hand, I know. So if I bobble them, I will know what they're gonna draw. Nurturing Peatland, which means they can attack with a Raging Ravine. So that sucks. That is not helpful at all against that draw. So Urza has to block the Raging Ravine here. So now we're in a really tough spot again. Jun just giving us the business. Oof. Yeah. It's just, they're both just big enough. And unfortunately my Graph Digger's Cage hasn't done anything here. They don't have a Croxa. So I don't know what I can draw, but it's not going to do it. Could find me a cryptic, I suppose. So, yeah, cryptic would give me one more turn. Nope. Alright. Did our best. Uh, two and one there against Jun. They just ground us out real nicely in game the third. Packers fan 2311. Deck has some neat things going on. The low artifact count was super weird when we were activating Tezzeret, but uh, definitely won us that game. deck is neat 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 but I want to see how good the trackers are I really like the trackers in the Uro cryptic and six deck we played so that is definitely the best deck I've seen with them so far just feel like Urza sometimes is clunking up these decks and this one's only playing eight artifacts plus the goose plus the tracker which is still weirdly low But 
I suppose we've had a lot of like untimely metallic rebukes. We almost won that game considering that we were stuck on one land for a couple of turns. So interested to see if variance breaks a little bit more our way. It's a great opening draw. I'm gonna keep this. Uh, I can fetch breeding pool for turn one goose here. And then if I need access to black because they kill my goose, I can Vista for it. So I'm going to start off trying to keep my blue count high early and then see if we can roll that into the mid game. Get my bobble out too. Not incentivized to crack it right away. I guess it would be fine since uh, Raven's Crime. Okay, so eight rack, you say? Maybe the the Reed Duke Jund. I think I want to insulate my hand then. going to be playing anything this turn. Suppose I could have just gone land land activate goose there. Yeah, that's probably better. We shall find out how punishing that was. Hopefully they have a handful of payoffs, but not much more discard. If they have double discard here, it's going to suck a little bit. Waste not. Oh my god. Oh, they're doing it. All right. Third goose, eh? Well, I guess I know what's getting discarded next time. Definitely don't need that. So if I discard a creature, they get a 2-2 two, two black zombie. So I'm... It's Liliana? Mind rot. Okay, so I'm just going to counter draw... against budget 8 rack. Rebuke is a good draw here. Tireless Tracker will put this game firmly out of reach for them, but I haven't gotten there yet. Need a black mana. All right, let's get Vista. Uh, I have three islands in play, so I can go get my Swamp. Full seas, Five Elf. So Wrench Mind. Shrieking Affliction Waste Not. So they are out of discard once I take the wrench mine. Sweet. Still gonna leave this Gilded Goose in my hand as padding. Shrieking Affliction and Waste Not are fine to resolve next turn. And Deck More Salvage comes in tap. So if they draw a playable discard spell, I want to be able to counter that. And I would like to have the padding of the Goose in my hand. Second Waste Not? Yeah, that's fine. Blackmail. Okay, so that's that's what I was waiting for. So one, two, three. Kind of sucks I don't get to make a food this turn, but oh, they have Raven's Crime with. Uh, Dakmore Salvage in their hand right now. Yeah, I see how that works. Okay, so I want to get my hand empty here. Play the Goose. Play the Sanctuary. Put the Cryptic on top. So choked on green, I haven't been able to make foods. 
So I don't know if this deck's mana base is misbuilt or whatnot, but definitely feels like I'm very green choked this game. So we're taking three damage. I'll crack one of my foods. Doesn't feel great, but. Having the food engine in play feels pretty good, so take it. I'll take it. So they've got Raven's Crime, Dakmore Salvage. Oh, they've got Dakmore Salvage in their hand and two unknowns. Right? Counter target spell draw card is a little risky, but. Gonna take the I guess if I draw, there's a lot of things I could draw here that are not gonna work out for me, but. Okay, that one did apparently. This gives me access to another Mystic Sanctuary. So, that ain't not bad. The deck more salvage in their graveyard. So do they dredge here? Don't think they will. They did not, yeah. Do I counter that and bounce their shrieking affliction? I think that's could bounce my Mystic Sanctuary, but that doesn't get me anywhere. Hmm. Counter target spell, return target permanent to Sar's hand. We'll counter that and bounce there. Yeah, I guess the affliction is sort of the way to go here. Make them spend a little more mana. Just need to buy time until I can find a tireless tracker, I think. Second, oh, so that's the shrieking inflection they had before. Yeah. If I can balance that out with my green mana every turn. I want to hold on to this delta just in case I pick up a tireless tracker. Fourth freaking goose. And I have to play it because if they make me discard it. I'm in trubs. I can reset a cryptic command on top of my deck whenever I want to, but it doesn't really get me out of the situation, so. Luckily, I can gain three life per turn at least, so. Single Shrieking Affliction is definitely not going to kill me. Rebuke. Well, I get to cast it at least, and I'll be able to make a food, so this keeps me in a holding pattern. I guess I could also draw Urza anytime, that will be fine. So. so this turn I'm casting Rebuke and making a food. Which I need four mana to stay afloat HP wise. More blackmail, sure. They tap more mana. Food. Okay. This really is a tricky draw. It's not great, but it does let me make multiple food per turn. Bobble. Bobble's good. Bobble stores a draw. So I'm gonna bobble on their upkeep. See where that gets me. Can make two food right now. 
So that's pretty good. Push a goose, sure. That's that's fine. So I'm gonna make one food. This happens for green. Second food. Follow my opponent. Inquisition on top, sure. Take three. Urza or tracker. Urza or tracker. Double cryptic. Well, that's not great. Okay. Well, we'll see how this all goes. How all this shakes out. So I can sack two foods, make eight mana and double cryptic this turn. Does mean I have to fetch somewhere along the line there, but okay. I think this one is gonna be counterbalance. But then I don't draw a card to get the rebuke back in my hand. So this one's gonna be counter draw. Inquisition is fine, doesn't do anything. And then they can Raven's Crime with the deck more that's in their hand. Well, they had a land. They could have Raven's Crime with that. Now I have two cards in hand, so I'm not going to take damage from Shrieking Affliction, I believe. Sweet. Play the land, sure. Going to glory in the semi stability I have found. So, where are their Dakmore Salvage? It's not in play. It's not in their graveyard. Where did it go? I had one. Make food. Make food. What a what a goofy game. A trillion foods here. Many many whelps. All right, gonna hold on to that and pass the turn. Well, the Dakmore's still in there. I just wasn't seeing it. Second Shrieking Affliction. That's fine right now. Because they can only get me down to two cards ahead. Third Shrieking Affliction. Sure. It's an awful lot of damage. So this turn... Let's just keep making foods. If I ever draw an Urza, it's going to be... going to be the nuts. So, Waste Nod, if I discard a land, they get mana, which doesn't do anything right now, so we're okay to keep going here. <laughs> what a ridiculous game. So they're going to choose not to dredge again. Yep. I don't know what they're hoping to draw, but the rack. Sure, rack is fine. As long as I keep the number of cards in my hand up, we're fine. So just, just looking on volume here. Again, Tracker at any point is going to end this. Urza is going to be hilarious. Still nothing, huh? All right. 
play the snow covered island, pass the turn. I'm going to be a little clock conscious here. I don't think this matchup is going to go to clock in any way, but. Fatal push. And a counter draw. Get something going. A little sketch, so I'm gonna have to reset that cryptic with the Mystic Sanctuary here. Client's getting a little chonky, so it definitely needs needs to be kicked. Gonna oh, they're scooped. All right. I wonder why they scooped there. So let's see. So I was going to draw the cryptic, land, rebuke, Urza. Okay, we're finally going to win eventually. So, eight racks. So, Tezzeret, kill them fast. Nile Spellbomb, destroy graveyard. Brutality mm -hmm. seems not great. So I just want to keep as much card advantage as possible in early interaction. I think I'll board out two fatal pushes and hope that they don't have like pack rat. Just don't have that much to board in and seems reasonable. I guess I could board in the Ashiox too. If I am gonna do that, I'm gonna board out a little bit of my discard because I don't want to get bit too hard. So lost to Jun, but we managed to get there in game one against eight rack. So got to be careful of their wrench mines. Although, I guess created step trigger only upon its owner. What that's all about? Gonna keep this hand. It's got a bunch of redraws. Lets me dodge their targeted discard. Black land. Okay, we can see cryptic, bobble, bobble. Am I gonna take one of the bobbles? Yeah, cool. So we go Vista Island. Oh, I screwed up the lands in this deck. Oh well. Draw. Don't need more cryptics yet. Definitely don't need that, but that's okay. Uh, Inquisition is useless against me right now, which is kind of hot. But they don't know that. And I'll never tell. Alright. Enters revealed zone. What do you got? More blackmail. Oh, that's a little frustrating. So I guess we'll reveal Cryptic, Cryptic, Vista? Yeah. Pack Rat. All right. Nailed it. So I have Fatal Pushes in my deck and Dead of Winter. That is neither of those things. I'll play Tapland, play Inquisition. We are at a reasonable pace to... Drown in Sorrow. Sure, that's fine right now. Uh, blackmail and Shrieking. So we'll take the Blackmail, and they really have nothing going on other than Pack Rat. So we might be able to set up Cryptic Command Lock against them, which is kind of silly. But that's where we're at. So. Hey, hey, kids. Yeah, so they're going to go land, pitch something to Pack Rat, and hit me for two. Unless they picked up something sweet. Mm 
Yep. So definitely going to bring in um, the Gonna bring in the words, 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 words. Uh, Dead of Winter in game three, if we get there. These guys can end our career pretty quick though, so. Might not be an option, we shall see. Started the crown. They play the Shrieking Affliction. So they're just going to discard their third. So they're going down to no cards in hand. Which is fine by me. So we're going to hit, get hit for six here. We're going to go to 11. I'm going to go to 10 on the fetch. I suppose I could have fired off my Metallic Rebuke there. Horus is fine. Goose is a good draw. Not a great draw, but a good draw. I get to go Cryptic, tap, draw card unless they cast something pre-combat. And then you have Thoughtseize to start beating me here. So tap, all creatures your opponents control draw a card. Castle Walkthwain, yeah, that's a good way to get out of this. Picked up the land and played it, that's fine. Not Thoughtseize. Inquisition's fine. Inquisition's hilarious. It lets them see what's coming for them, but doesn't doesn't actually get anything through here. Tracker is not good yet. Maybe in a few turns. So we get to draw one more new card for now before I start cryptic locking. Yep, put cryptic on top, cast the other cryptic, tap all creatures my opponents control, draw a card. So this turn I draw a cryptic, next turn we'll see. Would like another land. Castle Walk Queen, sure. <coughs> Shrieking Affliction, sure. Good draw from my perspective. That's not what I wanted to see there. I think I screwed up where I needed to bounce one of their pack rats. So now we're just stuck cryptic locking them, but we're cryptic locking ourselves at the same time. So I think eventually what happens here is we lose, but we shall see. Oh, we're going to lose very quickly because I can't... Okay, so I'm going to play a tracker here and hope that we can get out of this. So we're going to play tracker. 
Goose is going to chump block and make a food this turn. We're going to take possibly eight. They locked way into the combat. That's good. Means my rebuke is extra live. So we can't go down to one card in hand from here on out. This also means we're only going to take six this turn, so that's pretty good. And I could trade Tireless Tracker for one of these pack rats. Extrapate my cryptic. That is so savage. Mm -hmm. And the library. Woo. Yeah, that's that's real good. I think we lost this game. Good lord, that's insane. So I gotta draw like all my fatal pushes now? Jesus. That was savage. Okay, so extirpate. Look out for extirpate in game three. Kind of incentivizing a block block. Get one of their guys off the table. I think that I will. So best draw here is like a fetch land, I think. Regular land will be fine. Gotta make sure that I crack a clue before my turn, but I think I'm still screwed. Especially if I have to cast this rebuke. Oh, I can't crack that clue. I can do it on my upkeep in response to the afflictions, although that's not really helpful. They got a push that they can resolve, and I'm in trouble. Second pack rat, eh? Oh, this means I die on upkeep, yeah. Well, they're tanking on it, so I'm going to mess up their clock a little bit, so it's fine. And on clock is relevant. Pass. Pass. And we died. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Sideboarding. All right. So, dead of winter. Need those. Two fatal pushes is fine. Ashiok, no good here. All right. So, should have run the dead of winters with the pack rat plan in the back of my mind. Inquisition and Thoughtseize just feel real bad against that deck. Well... They're occasionally okay. I don't want to take damage for it, but I think that'll be fine as a way to do that. Yeah. All right. Let's get slightly more lucky in game the third. I wonder if they try to juke back and they board out the pack rats, but we'll see. That's an absolutely fine keep. Not perfect, but fine. So weirdly enough, I haven't seen enough targeted discard from them. They mold a six? Sweet. I play the Astrolabe. Do I keep the Bobble in hand for Black Nail? No, I don't need to. I'll just cast it. Fire it off on their upkeep. Mm -hmm. 
just going to remember that Clock is a way we can win this match here. Not my favorite way to win, but it's definitely something I can do. Fatal push in hand, that's fine. Tracker just has to go two for one, which it's pretty good at doing. The rack, sure. Oh no, their trigger went off first. Goose is not my favorite thing right now, but I guess it's okay. They have a fatal push in their hand right now, so I'd rather the goose get discarded. It's a reasonable draw. I suppose they don't put a way to... They, they don't have a way for a permanent to leave the battlefield right now. Wrench mine. And of course, this exact moment... I don't have an artifact in my hand. Shoot. All right. Uh, cryptic, cryptic seems like the right thing to do here. They've not shown that their deck has a lot of ways to turn on revolt. So I'm just going to jam the tracker here and pray. Finally drew an Urza in this match. That seems good. All right. So if we make it to the next turn, we're in great shape. So depending on what they have here, they got another wrench mine that could be in trouble. Shrugging Inflection's fine. Not great, but fine. Oh, and they passed. Good gravy. Sucks to be them. So, Urza Tracker is going to go off here and just win this game for us, I think. Jam in there for three. Yay! Reasonably proactive game plan. Tracker should draw us into more lands here. First fetch land we hit is a cryptic and two clues. Yeah, that's game. Woof! So they just have no way to turn on their fatal push. I think that was the big weakness in their draw. Sure, I'm prepared to travel tonight. Okay. Join match. Yes, please. All right. Match the third. Maybe the best hand we've had with this deck, so hopefully we don't get thoughts eased to death. Starting off with Tron lands. Hopefully it's bad Tron. Desukoi. I don't know what that means, but alright. I don't think there's an overgrown tomb in this deck. So this is getting me breeding pool, shock it, play the goose. Then goose next turn lets me play the thought seize, I hope. Okay. So this is probably Etron because main deck dismember is not yeah, yeah, it's Etron. Okay. Black source? That'll do. Gonna be painful, but gotta do what you gotta do here. Let's 
So they've got a Mime, Thought Knot, and Smasher. So they can't play Smasher with what they have, and they have a Warping Whale. The Warping Whale will get them to Smasher, but nothing I can do about that yet. So they play the Mime. They drew a Karn. Well, that's just so obnoxious. Good God. Ugh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I guess you can't win them all. Liquid metal coating. Yep. And I have no way to stop that. Hopefully they elect to play their Smasher next turn, but if they do not, I'm in huge trouble. So let's see what's up. Luckily we finally get to board in the Ceremonious Projection, so Smasher is slightly better for us than anything else. They killed my food. Well, that was a jerk move. I guess if and when they play the coding, I can counter it and tap their team. I've got four mana left, so I could pitch a card to bounce their Smasher while countering the Liquid Metal Coating. I know their last card in hand is Warping Whale. Then I get to hit the Karn for three and put it to two, which is not that good. So counter that and draw a card. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing. Maybe they will Karn minus again. I don't know why they would. And them killing my clue doesn't really get me anywhere, but they're not gonna attack with Smasher. They're too worried about Karn dying. So I could have tapped the Smasher there, but I wouldn't be able to kill the Karn. And then they could also just uh, Warping Whale for a blocker, so. Getting rid of the liquid metal coating keeps my land safe, so that's pretty important. Yeah, they kill my clue. Interesting choice. They also attack me? No. Okay. So they. They think this game is entirely about Karn. Which I'm not going to tell them they're wrong, because... Trigger. Cool. So kind of maybe almost starting to make things happen. Should have played the Vista there. That was definitely a mistake. Warping Whale, they don't have enough mana left, so blue, tap, tap. Get out of here, nerd. So kind of maybe crawling into this game, let's see. It's been a weird one, the way it is turned out. I guess their Karn couldn't get them anything they felt like was worth it. Yep, so they're wishing. I don't know what they can get that's more devastating than the liquid metal coating would have been, but let's find out. They get any artifact. Sky Sovereign. That's going to blow up my tracker. Blow up my construct. Yeah, sure.
I can get two clues here. So make a clue. Fetch. Make a clue. Should have put cryptic on top there. Yeah, that was a mistake. Just the problem is if I'm going to activate Urza at any point during a turn, then cryptic doesn't really be thing. Thought seize, sure, why not? Put myself to nine. Oh, okay. Well. They can crew the Sky Sovereign and kill my tracker, and then they're going to force me to chump block with Urza. Oh boy, that sucks. And it being exactly five CMC is too big for me to push. Push is really rough in this matchup, let me tell you. Oh boy. Oh, and that's Tron? Sure. Oof. Etron quality deck over there. Sure. Another wish. What is this one for? Sundering Titan, sure. So that kills three of my lands, plus they can. Yeah, I guess they don't kill me this turn, but I'm done with this game. That's rough. Alright, that's cool. We've got uh Ceremonies, rejection, etc. coming in here. Um, so what we're bringing in is fatal push is worth keeping. Ceremonies, rejections coming in for sure. Is that it? Ashiok's not particularly good. Tezzeret seems okay. The pushes seem so bad there, but. I definitely don't want to cut all of them, so maybe one of those, one Inquisition and one Thought Seize, although they're pretty good if we draw them when we're supposed to, so Metallic Rebuke, uh, something like that. I'm going to kick the client before I submit. No, I'm going to submit and kick. So close all windows, yes, just because Magic Online was getting chonky there. And while it's loading up, I'm just going to pop off to fill up my water. And then we'll be back with this match against Etron. Alrighty, player draw, I will play. Let's pop the thing back up and give you a gameplay, sure. Am I keeping this hand? Yeah, this hand could be anything. Could even be a boat. It's got Inquisition and a bunch of redraws, though, so. Their best turn on play is map, I guess. It's not particularly frightening, so... I think I'm going to try to dodge the chalice on zero. So this is going to be shock for breeding pool. Mana really didn't do us any favors last game too. We took a lot of damage. Get a food, play bubble. Play bobble. Play, oh, I don't know, bobble. Okay, and pass the turn to their upkeep and bobble them once. I have a land in hand, so. But I can go down to 
I could go down to just the food and still be able to play Metallic Rebuke, but I want to keep two. There's the Chalice on zero, so dodge that nicely. And this is the only zero mana artifact in the deck, so I'm going to go down to just those two. So the two cards I've seen are Matter Shaper and Reality Smasher. That is a fine draw. Do I play the turn to Tracker? I think their best play at this point is the... So the best thing they could play here is Eldrazi Temple Matter Reshaper. So if they have a Dismember, I get a little bit beat up for doing this this way, but otherwise... Okay, so Temple and Reshaper. Yeah, that's fine. Not really going to compete with, with what I've got going on here. I'm going to play the Delta, get a clue. Crack the Delta, shock for watery grave. Got an Inquisition here, which is like, uh, if they have another temple, they don't. They do have a Karn that's going to come down. Unless I can draw a Mystical Dispute, or uh, Metallic Rebuke, so... Shoot, and that Matter Shaper is going to block for their Karn, but I can bounce it next turn, so that's fine. So, going to bobble them before end of turn, because I'm trying to draw a Metallic Rebuke here. But even if I don't get it, I'm going to be okay, so... They had Thought Not coming in, so Shaper, Smasher, Wastes is in. So they're just jamming Thought Not Seer. That's fine, right? They get my Cryptic, but then I have time to draw something else, so that's, a, that's fine. Not surprising there. Yeah, they can get a free attack here. I'm going to take it. Crack a clue. That's not good enough. That's also really not great. So... Incentivized to trade my 4-3 tracker for their Thought Not Seer if they give me the opportunity. But this is a really rough game. Uh, oh, they can't play the Karn because Eldrazi Temple doesn't work that way. Doi. They don't attack with anything. Alright, we're in way better shape than I thought. I'm a foolish fool and did not understand the way cards worked. So let's crack a clue, get my tracker swole, bubble is acceptable, nope, oh, still a chalice on zero, that's fine, fourth bobble bites the dust, and I don't really want to attack, I guess I could have played the third tracker this turn and been gone completely nuts next turn, but Probably okay to have something in reserve. So they don't have anything going on so far. So they're one land off of a smasher. Create a one one. Okay, so that's going to get them to smasher. Sure. Can also get them to Karn. That's going to get them to Karn. Shoot. Well, couldn't prevent it forever. That gets them to uncounterable smasher too. So my tracker can get big enough to trade for that though. So yeah, likely they're just playing the Karn, which they are. Gonna fetch. Putting Inquisition on top does not help me at all. 
going to draw a card in response for two reasons. One, we want to be able to activate these, and two, we could draw Ceremonious Rejection or Metallic Rebuke here. Either one of those would be completely nuts. Of course, we hit neither. Can top deck a Cryptic Command? We have one in Exile, but otherwise, it's going to get a little bit hairy. Also, top deck and Urza will give me access to an awful lot of mana. If I attack with a 6 5 and a 5 4, or a wishing, sure. Getting bridge? I would guess bridge or pithing needle, but bridge seems way more likely with the board as is. Sky Sovereign, that's a interesting choice. Only killed my goose. Cryptic, please. Come on, man. It's pretty frustrating. So they could block this one with Shaper and Scion, but you could block the other one with Thought Knot and, yeah, okay. Sure. Yep. So I'd rather kill the Thought Knots here. It's fine. Of course, I would draw Cryptic. It's not the end of the world. They can play Sky Sovereign and shoot my tracker. Can also get Sky Sovereign, sure. I'm going to shoot my tracker. Yep, that's fine. But then they can't attack. Mm -hmm. Sky Sovereign mm -hmm. does have crew 3. So. I'm going to kill one of my clues, I'm guessing. Until your next turn. Okay, so that makes it a blocker. Gotcha. If I bounce or kill Karn, I can start cryptic looping. So, gonna make a food. Okay, that's tap land. Nope, not gonna get tap land. Nothing in my graveyard worth getting, so I'll just get a regular land. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Holy crap! All right, best draw on the deck. Best draw on the deck. All right, so we play Urza. Completely nuts. Construct eleven, eleven. Sure. Um, Going to use Cryptic Command to tap all their creatures and draw a card. So. One, two, three, four. They scoop. That's not fair. Come on. Really? Really? You're not going to let me? Ugh. All right. Huh. All right, all right, all right, all right. So... I still want this rebuke. Inquisition seems medium against a deck that has kind of all their threats cost enough that I can't get them with that. Miles Spellbomb's not great. Grafdigger's Cage not great. I guess the fourth push, but push feels so medium in this matchup.
Like just just the one the fun of Ashiok. Maybe we get a little lucky. Alright. Oh, that was weird. They just they that was such such an aggressive concession. It's not the best hand, but definitely gonna keep it. I have a bobble so I can get chalice. They mold a five though? Okay, well that's pretty lucky for us. So five against our seven and we can come out swinging. We can come out swinging. The one downside of Gilded Goose again is the fact that while it does give me artifact synergies in this particular draw, Chalice Hunter, oh shit. So they got my bobble there. Ceremonious rejection. Because they got my bobble there, do I want to hold off on ramping? Can fetch breeding pool with this and just jam. So the goose accelerates me to a turn two tracker, but I don't actually want to play the turn two tracker. So I'm going to play the delta and pass the turn. If they don't play anything, I get a tap breeding pool. If they play something that I need to counter, I will get an untapped breeding pool and counter it. Map. On this board, map is not dangerous. Uh, I was supposed to get the breeding pool there. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Wista. Um, it's going to go get me a... I guess the island... And I'm going to play Astrolabe this turn. Is it a goose? Yeah, I don't know. I, I st just, Gilded Goose is just the most awkward, like the most awkward card I think like, I've ever played with. It's just, oof, just so many times I'm like, what, what do I even do with you? You freaking goose. All right. Second Tron land. Yep, so two. Could have rushed out the Ashiok and tried to block them there, but didn't take that one. So get the breeding pool now. So this turn might be tap land goose. Hope not. Untap land goose. Seems better. And I can play the Astrolabe too. Cool. So goose. Boosh. Astrolabe. To do. Thoughtseize or leave up the rejection? I think I gotta leave up the rejection because it is sort of more mana efficient to counter a spell they play. Also, the top of their deck, they could top deck the thing they need and then. Alright, another map. I think I'm gonna reject this because this gives them Tron. That's an awful lot of mana. So, could get punished here. Didn't. Alright. Lucky me. Spatial contortion. That's completely fine. Replacement goose, sure. So let's fire off the thought seas. Oh, and I have three islands now, so I can also play the tracker this turn. Double Karn, eh? Well, that's pretty damn good. So I want to get Tracker into play because Tracker could kill it if they down tick it. Yes. So I'm going to Mystic Sanctuary. We're putting Rejection on top. And we just need them to not top deck a land. And we should be golden. Living my life like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. Okay. Everybody clench. So much mana! Oh my god. Alright. And they get si Sky Sovereign and they kill my tracker. That's completely... That's... Wow! <laughs> oh my god. What... What What can I do? I mean... Uh... Yeah. All right. Ah. 
Yeah, I mean, I played it as best as I could, and then, and then they top decked the Tron Land. I mean, Jesus. I don't, I don't know what happens from here, but I know it's bad. So they animate Sky Sovereign, swing in, kill my goose. I guess I could top deck Cryptic. I don't know if that matters. I mean, I top deck the Cryptic. So what do we do with this? So if I bounce their Karn and then counter it, then they can't crew Sky Sovereign for now. So that's the plan. Problem is I need them not to cast anything else. Oh jeez. They still have five left. So I can rejection this this turn. Then get hit for five. I don't know if this helps at all. We're just slightly pinched on mana, too. Yeah, there's no way around that. So I guess I counter draw, and then I could draw the second cryptic. If I return the Sky Sovereign to their hand... They can't attack with it, but then they can get the liquid metal coating and just start strip mining me. There's just way too many ways for them to get through this. I gotta I think I gotta counter draw and then just hope that they try to kill me. Yeah, that would have been great earlier. No, they go for liquid metal. Ah, this is so bad. Worm coil. Oh. Yeah, and then they can still attack. Great. <laughs> so if I had one more mana, would have been okay there, but they just top decked exactly what we needed and we got crushed. And they they searched earlier for the Tron piece, so they just they just lucked out entirely. Wow. Oof. That was uh just the toughest beat. Good lord. We had one. We were one turn away from having the game locked away, and then uh, got snatched away from us. Oh well. Good television. That's what that was. Excellent. Excellent viewer experience. Definitely got some luck with the four-one with the uh, Urza Breach deck. So. <laughs> Got to look for my train times for later on. Go, match number four. Okay, this is some disruption. Doesn't have any artifacts, but very slow hand. Vulnerable to not that vulnerable to the Ponza deck. Let's keep it and hope we pick up an artifact. It's got to be a zero mana artifact. And I don't have green if I draw a goose, so. They chose not to play first. Yeah, they did. Crazy talk. All right, so we get to grab their Thoughtseize. Hand actually should line up pretty well against what they're doing. So they're going to hit us with Raven's Crime, our choice of discard. 
Uh, we're going to discard Metallic Rebuke. Next turn, they get to Croxa. They could alternatively go Raven's Crime, Raven's Crime, which would be considerably worse for us. So hopefully they don't do that. But if they do, we'll be in a little bit of trouble. They do play Croxa, okay. Gonna discard Cryptic Command, I guess. Yeah, doesn't feel great, but. Well, that would be great draw if we had a green source. It's exactly what we need in this matchup, but. They got Swamp, they've got. Black Leaf. Discard Bloodstained Mire, I guess. So we'll go. Okay, discard Sanctuary because it doesn't do anything for us right now. They didn't play the Raven's Crime again. Weird choice. Wonder why. Thoughtseize. Well, that's just rude. I gotta counter that one. Okay, so they have their four lands for Croxa, so. Oh boy! Run against a lot of black mid range decks with infinite discard, and we are playing zero copies of Veil of Summer in this deck. Does not feel good. Oh, they'll go for Croxa this turn, I guess. Well, here's my Urza. He's very naked. My naked Urza. Does start drawing me cards in a roundabout way. So you awaken Croxa, escape Croxa, you get to take the last card out of my hand. And then I have to hit one of my Fatal Pushes, which would be great. Dreadbore, sure. The Rack, also sure. Babble. Babble. Ah, oh, I should have swung first. Oh well, it's not gonna matter too much. Shrinking Affliction on top. Okay. I'd like to draw a Cryptic Command, please. Another Urza. Well, could be worse. Could be worse, could be worse. Croxa? Sure. I will discard this tracker. Take two. Sure. Misty Urza. I put Cryptic on top for next turn, I suppose. I'm going to take nine here. Good God. And then I'm going to take three, so I'm going to four. Oof. Definitely not. And then I could go to three to get the Mystic Sanctuary and put the Cryptic on top. It doesn't do that much for me. I suppose I could bounce one of my own permanents and draw a card. That would get two cards in my hand, plus... Yeah, okay. So I take three... Take six. Oh crap, I forgot about that. Yeah, alright, we're just dead. Cool. And not playing any copies of Veil of Summer in the sideboard feels super wrong. I do not know how AOAO managed to get the record that they did with this deck, but Wrath Digger's Cage, Nile Spell Bomb. So one, two, three. Take out three Thoughtsies, I feel like, is the best. And then, is there anything else? I guess we can take out Ashiok, or put in Ashiok over something, but no. So this is just all about getting a tracker into play. And being lucky enough not to have the mulligan. Oof. Just getting kicked in the junk.
for these matches. Just so much black mid-range with a million discard effects. Let's do it. Not great, but we're going to keep it. So, that's shock. Boost. Yep. Are they going to hit Thoughtseize or Inquisition here? Inquisition, so they only get Fatal Push. That's fine. Sort of the least good card against them, generally. Sanctuary! Sucks, but uh, we draw another land. We're going to be in business here. <sighs> sure. Why not? So now we got to run off two lands in our 22 land deck. That's why we fetched once. But there's one. So one more, and we'll be okay. Blech. All right. Well, if I do draw a land, it could even be a Mystic Sanctuary. No, I don't want it to be Mystic Sanctuary, because then I have to play Urza. So I really want just any untap land. That is not an untap land. Okay, so we're discarding Cryptic here, and then casting Rebuke, most likely. Let's get really bad really fast. Well, at least it's going to be over quickly, if nothing else. If nothing else, it should be over quickly. Rack is fine. Liliana tick up is fine. I'll lose my cryptic. No Croxa. They know what I have in hand, so if they have a push or something like that, we're gonna get messed up here if we do draw the land. Still gonna have to take the frick. Bean. Kind of a card draw. But now Liliana gets to go to six. So even if I do get to do stuff, I'm gonna. Uh, Shrieking Affliction. Yeah, I'm letting that resolve. Yeah, I'm letting that resolve. Discard my Urza. So fetch black. The last card in their hand has to be push or something of that nature. Hopefully it's not another terminate. Probably is. Well, guess it's about not to matter. Good god, that is awful. So we're going to go down to two lands here, huh? Yeah, it was exactly Terminate, which I guess kind of means that that... Oh, Jesus, we're so screwed. Oh my god, what is this? What else could they possibly have?
We could just plus the Liliana here, I guess, the seven, and then, yeah, and then we're going to take five on our upkeep. Yeah. Without Veil of Summer, this feels like completely unwinnable, and I don't really know why we're playing Sultai. I mean, I know there's trackers in this deck. Good God, that's just, yeah. All right. That was rough. So sideboard for this deck seems quite misbuilt with no copies of Veil of Summer and then also no Aether Gust. So really not able to leverage a lot of the cards that are best from these colors. Hopefully our last match goes a little bit better than some of those. We are on one and three, so only able to get back 50 points here. Definitely going to keep this. Okay. So since my opponent took a mulligan, I'm going to fetch Watery Grave. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I meant for that to come in untapped. Just playing real sloppy now. Well, out of, out of all the decks against which that could have happened, I guess this isn't the worst one. So, now I've got choices to make. I want to play the goose. I can't play goose and inquisition this turn. So which ones more important? Inquisition. If they hit, I light up the stage. They have two. Of course they have two. Why wouldn't they have two? So this reduces the number of cards they're gonna have overall. The uh, lava spike, or sorry, the lava dart in their hand is also pretty poor against Gilded Goose. I'm just looking to draw more interaction here. Burst Lightning. That is going to be great against Gilded Goose, though. So hopefully they play it. Don't know why they would, but hopefully they play it. Did they not have a land in that whole hand? Oh, they didn't. No, they did. They did. They're just playing it post-combat for no good reason. Uh, oh, because they want to light up. No, I'm an idiot. Never mind. Ignore me. Ignore the man behind the curtain. And they hit a mountain. Also hit a mana morphos. So I really, 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 quite spectacularly need to draw some kind of interaction, or we're going to get buried a little bit. They played their light up, so. No push. Blade can draw me push, though. Draw. Another goose, huh? I mean, beggars can't be goosers. This is going to get me uh, an island. And then I get to play two geese, which is like kind of better than one. They left open the mana to burst lightning here, but luckily I drew a second goose, so maybe that's relevant. We'll find out soon enough. So one goose is going down to burst lightning and in a turn, most likely. Did not, okay. Very interesting. Urza is actually gonna be pretty okay on this board. Third land is all right by me. Second soul scar is also good from our perspective. I'm gonna play the mana morphos. Yeah, they get two prowess triggers, but um, one of their soul scar mages has summoning sickness, so it doesn't really matter. So they have one unknown in hand plus lavadart, lava spike, and burst lightning. So they're not incentivized to lava spike me here unless they want to go all in on this turn, and it isn't really worth them going all in on this turn when I have two blockers. 
Uh, and they have one creature that has summoning sickness. So they're going, yep, kill the goose, sure. Again, they could go all in this turn, but it doesn't really make sense. They're allowing that the other way. So they're going to go all in. Huh. With them having a creature that has summoning sickness, it doesn't make a lick of sense to me, but sure they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know you can do that. So your hand is Lava Spike plus one. I'm going to take five. And then I'm going to fetch play Urza. That's a little unfortunate. All right. So do I want to put down this tracker? No, Urza is 100% the right play here. Because Urza means I can crack at least one food this turn. And unfortunately, I don't have anything I want to put on top, but that's fine. And I have a backup Urza for next turn, so should be game here. Um, but they can put out a lot of damage out of relatively few resources. So let's see what they got. They got Spike on me, sure. They're going to eight. Light up the stage. Yeah, that's probably the best thing they could have here. So, light away, my friend. Bedlam Reveler, Lightning Bolt. They can't play the Reveler right now? Can't play anything right now. The Reveler costs two? Yeah, it does. So I really would like to draw a land this turn. Do I spin my Urza at end of turn? I don't really think this deck is built for that, but what I will do is... Do I want to crack a food? I think if I don't, I'm going to get choked on mana a little bit, so... Well, that was an A-plus draw. So... That goes green. Play Tireless Tracker. That's not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. So play Misty, trigger, crack Misty, don't get snow covered anything, trigger, tap a clue, tap Astrolabe, crack a clue. Bobble. Tap the clue. Tap. Bobble. Crack a clue. Play a second Urza. At 10, they're going to play Bedlam Reveler. Still have a Lava Spike in hand. No, did they play that? They played it, I think. Second Urza gets me more power. Hopefully I don't somehow take 10 this turn. Let's keep the old Urza. All right. Good luck, opponent. You got this. Yep, so they play the Bedlam Reveler. So they have a what do they have in hand? Soul Scar Mage? Sure. And they draw three. Lightning Bolt is one of their better draws, but it doesn't end me here. Lava Spike is good, doesn't end me here. Lightning Bolt. Okay, so that was like, as I was saying, probably their best possible draw. They're just gonna three me. Interesting. Fetchland would be great. Mystic Sanctuary is not, not the best. It does give me a clue. 
thinking position on top is no good, so let's go tap lab tap lab one two three spin Urza. Just in case we hit a land. Cryptic command. All right, so tap all creatures my opponents control. Draw a card, and then we're just gonna kill them, right? Yeah. Cool. So seven seven eight eight. Yeah, we're just gonna kill them. Sweet. Sixteen plus five, yeah. Boom. Get out of here, nerd. Okay, so sweet way to start here. We've got collective brutality, we've got dead of winter, damping spear, Tezzeret? I don't think I need a Tezzeret. I'm gonna cut maybe two cryptics. Um, and three Thoughtseize? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, is that good? Seems good. Maybe we'll bring back one Cryptic like that. Alright, let's do it. This is a pretty A plus hand. Go turn one Astrolabe, turn two Goose Inquisition. Yeah. Alternatively, we can go turn two Goose and hold up uh, Metallic Rebuke, and them doing that on turn one is great for us. So, play the Labe. Trigger. Play the Bubble. I guess the downside of the line I took is if they have a Kiln Fiend, but the upside of the line I took is if they had two Kiln Fiends in their hand. Soul Scar Enters the Revealed, sure. Don't, not all of them play Kiln Fiend right now, I believe, because it seems like, it seems like that in the last little while when I've been playing against this deck, they don't always have Kiln Fiend because it's just kind of so all in that they don't want to expose themselves that way. Tracker, yeah. Okay, so fetch. I think I'll Inquisition once first and see what is up. Bolt, bolt, light up Karizev's expertise. All right, so gonna leave him with this. Take the light up the stage. Do I take three to get rid of their bolt? Actually seems reasonable. It's weird, but it's reasonable. Rationally irrational. Just have to be worried about the Kari's of his expertise, but is it CMC three or less? Mm -hmm. Target creature or vehicle. Okay, so it's anything. Alright. So just going to need, need to be conscious of the Karizev's expertise from here on out. Whatever creature I play can be conscripted to their side and smash me in the face. Goose is obviously fine to run into that, but they have Islet, Karizev, and they drew another Lightning Bolt. Why not? So we're going to go to 9 this turn. 13, take 4. Yeah, we're going to 9. I get to play Astrolabe Goose this turn. I think I basically can't play Tireless Tracker. If I play just the Goose... No, the Astrolabe comes in untapped. Cool. So let's get a Snow Cover. Play the Astrolabe, cool. Urza. All right, and Urza should be able to help us get this game locked up as long as I can make it through this turn. 
Islet is this. Sack Islet, sure. That's one of the better plays they could make for us from our perspective. Soul Scar Mage. I need this for the Kari Zev's expertise next turn, so I think I let that resolve. This also means that I can jump or I can block one of their creatures without my goose dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Well, no, they've got Kari Zev's expertise plus something I don't know. So, all right, land. Hey. Six. Get to get a snow covered island. Play Urza. I have Cryptic or Rebuke up here, and I can crack a food if need be, so I think this is game. So they're gonna expertise if they have a land. If they don't have a land, I'm in great shape. They do have a land. So they're gonna Kari Zev, I'm gonna counter it, and then that should be game. Which is sweet. So we made our 50 points back, looks like, against Prowess Tech wins here. Nice traders. If they swing with everything, they lose a creature, and they kill my goose. Unless I want to go down to four, which I probably actually do, because the goose is pretty great. Yeah, I think them going all in makes sense from their perspective. They have Lava Dart. They don't have one in their yard. Okay, so only Gut Shot gets me here. So let's go to four. I've got cryptic. Can make more food. Can I afford to play this tracker this turn? It costs me four, and I don't have a land for it anyway, so I'm gonna crack a food proactively. Get myself to seven, pass the turn back, see what happens. Still definitely possible we lose, although it's not looking likely now. Summit King, sure. Crash through. So I can counter that and draw a card. So they don't draw a card and they don't get trampled, which is great. Mystic Sanctuary also great for a bunch of reasons that are about to become apparent. Land. Well, that could be bad. I don't think that could be kill me bad, but it is definitely something. They swing with both can't make a food right now, so I think I'm going to be okay with losing my goose here. Just can't lose Urza, that's, that's the one thing that is essential. Bolt technically couldn't kill me, but I'm just going to hedge my bet this way. Most burn spells will kill my construct, and the goose is already dead, but... Yeah, well, glad that I did what I did. I think they only have to cast the front side of that. Oh, they hit me. Okay, so they are going to flash it back. Interesting. I wonder why. Yeah. I don't know 
thought that was worth it. So green. Play this tracker, get two clues, go to four. Cryptic on top. And use Urza to tap the clue, and my Astrolabe, crack the clue, draw a cryptic. And that should be game. They should be locked from here. Because uh, Tracker plus Urza is loop with cryptic command. And they used their Labadart last turn. So I can go tap their team, bounce my Mystic Sanctuary here. There's the chance that that leaves me open to being bolted. And also, let's go tap draw. Yeah, so. Gonna just get a little proactive here. Tap my opponent's team, draw a card. Cool. Then we play Mystic again. Investigate. Gonna put the cryptic on top again. Yep. So we can go tap this, pay this, crack the clue, draw a card. So now I have my cryptic again. Got a fatal push for their soul scar mage. Just gonna crack in for five. Do I wanna do more? I think I do. So basically, I want to end this game as soon as possible. This cryptic lock is good, but it's slightly tenuous. They can easily build up multiple burn spells and take me out here. Swiss beer is fine. Tap all creatures my opponent's control, return target permanently to its owner's hand. So target mystic, one, two, three, plus one. So they can bolt me here. They do not. I'm gonna crack this bobble end of turn. It's not really doing much for me. I have enough mana to sustain what I'm doing. So we'll play Mystic Sanctuary. I drew a second cryptic. I'm gonna just leave that as my little secret for now. Put the cryptic on top. Tap my clue. Crack my clue. Draw the cryptic. Crack in for seven. Don't actually have enough to play both cryptics, so. If they have double burn spell here, could die. Tap all creatures your opponent's control, draw a card. So if they can respond with bolt bolt, I die. Metallic rebuke saves me from that. If they have double spike even. Yeah, so one lava spike. Puts me to one, but I have lethal on board, so that's okay. Um, although the downside of this could be if their last card is Lavadart, so I'm actually going to counter this, and this should lock up the game. Yeah, so if they had the last card was Lavadart, they could have killed me there if I didn't counter that. So well played, me. So uh, as usual, the fair Urza decks are a bit of a rough go. However, this one was super fun, um, so not exactly sure how they 5-0'd with this unless they hit nothing but the best matchups for that to deck. Where are you? Sultai? Oh, there we go. 
So pretty fun deck. Uh, not playing any copies of Veil Summer in the sideboard seems like hot nonsense, and so do these one of artifacts. So starting to get a good idea of how to look at these decks and sideboards. Thanks for joining me, and have yourself a fantastic day.